In the first video in the series, we talked about the idea of sections and breaking a page down into smaller parts. In the second video, we took a closer look at the order of those sections and why the order is important. And in this video, we're going to look at actually laying content into those sections with some tips along the way. Now that you understand that pages are made up of rows, rows should have headings, and that the order of rows is important, we can actually look at turning content into actual layouts. This video will have a different feel than the other two, as in the other ones we covered more fundamental stuff. We're going to start with this website design, and the design, like the fonts and elements, colors and everything, are already styled because this video is about layout, not design. And we're going to use this website to have fake content that we turn into actual layouts. Here are the documents from our fake plumber client that we're going to work with. There's home, about, services, and contact. From my experience, a typical client won't give you contact page content and their home content will be a little thin. But I'm not trying to make these documents a best case scenario. I've thrown in some oddballs in there to make it a little more challenging for the learning opportunity. So let's start with this home page content example. Give it a look and get some ideas going through your head about how you would lay this out. Let's begin and I'll give you tips along the way to help make better layouts. All right, first on the home page. First thing we need is a hero section. I actually have a video on above the folds and I recommend you check it out if you want to learn more about hero sections and title sections. Looking at our content, we need to find a heading and a descriptive paragraph so we can make the hero section. However, when you look around in the content, there's no headings to be found. So what do we do? If you remember from the first video in the series, you know that every section needs a heading. Tip number one, if the content doesn't provide a heading, come up with one yourself. This happens a lot. Clients don't necessarily understand how to best write for the web and the web calls for headings. So if you need a heading for a section, come up with it yourself. This doesn't mean you have to become a content writer. You can keep it short and simple. Read the content and summarize what it's talking about. This hero section title is a bit different than the more obvious headings like an about section or a services section. In this case, I'm just going to summarize what they do. As per the fake content, they are a specialized kind of plumber. So I've come up with the heading, we are plumbers specializing in blocked drain cleaning. This does a good job of accurately describing their business and saying what they specialize in, which can be an appeal for people looking for that specific service. And then I use the sentence from their about content to help me describe how they can help me as a user. And then of course, a call to action. And here's what that ended up looking like. I've chosen some plumber related background image, as well as added an overlay so you can read the text better. Next up, we can make a section for about the company. So it can be an intro about the company and a link to the about page. For this, a two column layout is always a solid choice. That way you can fit in an image, which adds value to the user. And if you focus on a lot of imagery over content, you could use a layout like this, which has two images and some content. If you want to try something else, tip number two, go to Pinterest and type in website layout, and you'll get a lot of images like this. You can take these layouts and visualize if your content would work with them or not. And if it does, then just mimic it in your section. But in this case, I'll just stick with the two column layout. I've added a paragraph taken from their full about content, as well as an image. In the content, they go in depth about them, but it's the home page. So ideally you want to have blurbs or excerpts from those pages linking to them. So if they wanted to learn more, they would just go to that respective page. Make sure there's a heading there as well. I'll call it about us as headings are supposed to be simple and informative. And lastly, a button. Now for a services section. They have three services. We can copy three excerpts from their content as well as some headings for the content. I'll add a button link to the respective page as well. This is what the content looks like in its basic form. Three is a great number in web design. So if you ever see the opportunity to use it with your content, you should. You could do so many different styles with a three column layout. You could do a centered icon layout which you could add outlines on, background colors, or even an image. You could of course do the left aligned layout as well, or you could use an image instead of an icon. This is what I'll use, icons with a three column layout. I'll also add a bit of design flair by adding a background color. I'll make sure this section has a heading, and because we chose the style that we did, we can go back to the about section and add a background color so the sections are more visually distinct from each other. If you want to get a bit more spaced out, you could use a row layout that has columns inside. 
This one's good if you have a bit more text content per service or also works well if you have less or more than three services. Speaking more or less than three services, what happens if you don't have such an ideal number of three to work with? Well, for two, you could just use a two column layout. For four, you could just use a two by two grid. Or if you can, fit it in four columns. When you have five, you could do something like this. Or six, you could do a two by three grid. Here's the next bit of homepage content. And this one should be a challenge. Any designer would describe this as a wall of text, which leads me to tip number three. Don't fear walls of text. Many designers would try to take this content and break it up as much as possible to avoid having a wall of text. But in reality, a wall of text can be a distraction-free experience for users to consume the content. There's nothing necessarily wrong with slapping this bad boy right onto the site. However, we can still do some things to make it a little more of an attractive layout. Here's what it would look like in its simplest form. Let's try to come up with different ways to make it better. You can see that with a two column layout with one image, this doesn't look right. The content has too much text. But one thing you can do is simply add two images. I found this layout to save me time and time again. If you didn't have any images to work with, you could split the text into two columns. And for the title, you could either left align it or center align it. This is the layout I'll stick with. And to finish it off, I'll just add a blue background color. And because it's the home page, I'm gonna have a call to action which will just be a web form. Moving on to the about page, and this is the content we're working with. It's three paragraphs that each have their own headings, as well as another massive paragraph to deal with. Let's start with the three. But before that, we need a title section. For the title, a simple about us should be sufficient. I did a video on above the fold layouts, link in the description, where I go over different designs your website can have for these title sections. But in this case, I will go with the trusty title, paragraph, and background image. I've pulled the sentence from the about page content, which can be a little tagline. I think this style overall is particularly effective because of a couple different reasons. First, it catches the eye and very intuitively looks like a title section because it's such a common style. Next, as opposed to a more minimal layout like this, this style gives you the opportunity to add an image. And then there's a lot of different things you can do with this style to push the design. There's a bunch of other title designs out there, but I'll just go with this one. Now for the three paragraphs. These are three separate ideas, so you don't want them in the same visual section. You could do something as simple as this, just adding a divider in between them. This makes the content really easy to consume, but design-wise, it could definitely go further. Tip number four, add images wherever you can. Images are great for user experience and overall providing more value to the user, so you should use them whenever you can. A single image could be the difference between a conversion and someone who just clicks off your website. Just by adding an image for each one, you open up the design possibilities more. What I found clients like a lot is to stagger the layout by alternating what side the images go on. This works best if you have more than three, but it still works here. This is what I'm going to go with. And here's also the full width version of this, which always looks good. Now for that wall of text. If we try to break it up into two columns like we did before on the home page, this is what ends up happening. It's not even and it looks a little strange. This can happen if the content is in a word count sweet spot. If the two column layout doesn't work and you can't really fit a normal cropped image there, what do you do? Tip number five, format the text. Basically, this means look through the content and see if there's any opportunities to split it up by adding more headings, or my favorite one to look for is any bulleted points or numbered lists that you can make. Or if there's a quote in the content, you can use a quotation or block quote element, which usually can be styled quite up a bit to make the design look a little bit better. I recommend you also break up large paragraphs into smaller, more consumable paragraphs. Even if it doesn't make grammatical sense to break the paragraph, it can improve the readability a lot, especially on mobile. When you do all of this, you make the content a lot more consumable and attractive to look at for the user, which improves user experience. In the end, I ended up adding a extra heading as well as a bulleted list. Instead of over-designing this, I'm just gonna use a content-focused layout, which is this 70-30 column layout. You can get fancy with this layout by adding a background image faded on the right, or a transparent floating image. And lastly, we'll slap a call to action on the bottom. This is important to do on about pages. 
And now for the services page. Here's the content for it. A general paragraph for about their services, as well as content for each of their three individual services. Title section first, following the same layout as the about page. And then for the general service paragraph, I'm going to format this as highlighted text. This is something I like to do in my designs a lot because it can look good on any website design and that the content catches the eye so a user is more likely to read it. And it being intro text, it will have more focus and impact. As in terms of hierarchy, it will be more weight than the other services. Instead of the three column layout with tiny blurbs and icons we used on the homepage, we can add a little more information than that as this is the service page. We still don't want to add all of the content as that's what the individual service pages are for. So we can use full images instead of icons, as well as more content to make it more informative. It will be a two column layout with it being styled just like the homepage is, but as rows. And finally, I'll add a call to action to finish it off, which concludes the parent service page. Each of the services would get their own individual page, but I won't cover that in this video as it would just take too long to edit. And lastly, the contact page. Here's the content they gave us. This is typical to receive this level of content for the contact page from the client, if any. To lay it out, I will start with the title section, of course. And then because the form is the most important part of the contact page, I will put it in a 70-30 layout, with the form having a similar style as the surfaces to give it more of a focus. And then putting in the contact information in the smaller column. And that's the site. It's user experience focused, simple, and distraction free, which is all things you want to aim for when laying out an effective website. The goal of this series was to give you a foundation of how to start taking client content and putting it into basic functional layouts. Now, you can take it further from here and create more complex layouts specifically for the content you're working with, hopefully following the guidelines and tips I've laid out in the goal of creating layouts that don't get in the way of the user consuming the content. I'm putting all this content out there for free, so now for me to pay the bills. If you want to support me on Patreon, link in the description. If you want to get your website critiqued by me, link in the description. If you want to be a better web design or developer, subscribe for more videos.